Hallelujah. So let's see, you know we were worshipping, I saw five bars. Five bars. And as we were worshipping, I saw that the spirit room was ripping down these bars. Amen. And I saw those legs were strengthening and there was strength coming around your body. And the Lord said that the chains that the enemy had tried to limit you and hold you back has been destroyed in this new season. I'm bringing you out, saith the Lord, and I'm breaking the chains that the enemy has sent and assigned. Kababashaka. Every demonic assignment that's been assigned to your life to this moment, the Lord says, I've ripped apart the chains. Just as Paul and Silas began to worship and the prison doors are open, your worship is going to unlock your breakthrough in this season. Your worship is going to unlock. The Lord says, I've opened your heart to worship because that is the key to bringing acceleration. And without, if you're not only the Lord's going to accelerate, it's going to also cause a rest restoration. A recovery to come into your life. Hallelujah. A recovery is going to come into your life where God is going to move you to new dimensions in Him. Hallelujah. Get ready for all that was taken to you to be restored right now in this hour. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank, Thank you, Holy Lord. Ghost. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Holy Thank Ghost. You, Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You know, Carissa, I just saw kind of... Do you wear glasses? I've never seen you wear glasses. You do wear glasses sometimes. But it was like there was... there was The, the glasses were getting bigger on your face. <laughs> do you know? And the Lord was showing me how you were seeing. And it was like magnetizing, magnifying. So I just feel the Lord is going to show you, going to, there's things that you've been seeing, but it's going to become a lot clearer in this season, especially with the Word of God. He's going to show you things in the Word of God, and you're going to be like, wow, I never understood it like that. There's going to be a deeper level of clarity and understanding. He's going to really open your eyes, so even what's happening around you, even to the spiritual dimension, even to the spiritual, yes, Lord, even to the spiritual, he's going to start making you understand how things are happening spiritually and the spiritual things of even in the family because your heart is for the family and there's a reason why you have that heart because I can kind of see you as there's a there's been an, an anointing as pastors going to bring everybody together like glue. Wow. like glue but the Lord says in order to restore the family which is your heart I need to show you the spirit that's affecting the family so you can understand how to break it in the spirit so you can see the restoration come in the natural so it's going to cause a an understanding or a revelation about the spiritual so that you can understand how to bring the, 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 how to bring everybody together to complete the mandate hallelujah and so I saw he's enlarging enlightening and increasing in, in bringing you deeper revelation deeper revelation in the word Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you, God. 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 Keisha, I just feel the same thing to say to you. There's more to yes. come. There's so much more to come. Amen. There's so much more to come. And I just feel there's an anointing. Same to, just, it's like I see the similar anointing. It's like for restoration. Restoration of the home. And I just feel that you don't don't worry about who you are in your family. Worry, you know, God is going to give you a voice, it's going to bring reason, it's going to bring clarity, and even those who are bigger voices in your family, they're going to listen to you because you've got a wisdom that comes from Him. Is that what you said? There's a wisdom that comes from God, God has put in you, and that wisdom will not be denied. It's not about an age thing or a race thing or a color thing, it's a wisdom thing in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah! Because God has given you supernatural, divine wisdom that when you speak, yeah. You know, out of my Bible, I just saw the word prophet come up. Hallelujah. I just jumped up at me and he said, he's going to put a prophetic tongue. I'm not even joking. The word just came up to me. He said, the prophetic tongue when you're mouth. That's exactly what you said, isn't it? So I'm just confirming the word, my dear. Go into the word. Go into the word. Your secret is you need to be tunneled in this. You need to be straight. It's not like this is a straight path. You need to just walk straight. Go for it straight. Just go straight. Do not, do not look to the left or the right. Do not worry about people around you, what they're saying. This season, they're not going to understand you. They're not even going to like you. So I'm, I see some friends not liking you anymore because they're saying, Keisha, you've changed. But listen, change for God. Change for good. And let the new friends, the ones who really love you, come into your life. Because I see even there's going to be a shaking because of the transformation. They're not going to understand the transformation, but they're going to know that God's hand is upon her. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. 
Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name. Sherry, I just see the Lord saying that he's encouraging you to let it go again. I just, you know, he says, he says, I'm, I'm gonna, I've, I've opened the realm. I've opened the door for you, and you can trust me. That's it. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's all I have to say to you. The Lord says, you can trust me. You can trust me, and don't worry about anything. Sometimes, you know, it's very easy for you to get burdened. It's very easy for you to get stressed. But the Lord says, I want you just to trust me. Just trust me. Just trust me. Don't worry about anything. Just trust me. And I will I will just do it all for you. You're going to see it's, it, it's an automatic for you, my dear. It's an automatic. You don't have to worry about a thing. God loves you so much. That's the message from heaven. That's all I hear. God loves you so much. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He loves all of us. But... That one came from heaven, amen. <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's get into the word of God now. Amen. I think I'm finished. Amen. Matthew 14, verse 22. Praise God. Are we all there? If you're, if you're there, say praise the Lord. If you're not, say help me, God. Praise the Lord. You should have had time to get there. Praise God. And we're going to, just, just a short word today, then I'm going to close. We've got some refreshers in the back. I'll let you go, you know. And we can all have a lovely, you know, summery day. Amen. Amen. Um, I, I like, my favorite part of the, of the summer is this time. Because this is a time where I, you know, I even usually, I wake up late on a summer. So I can have, I can go to bed late. So I can avoid the sun. So I told you, I don't really like, <laughs> but you know, but I enjoy this time. Amen. So I'm not going to spend too long. Look at the Bible says, verse 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side. While he sent the multitudes away, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. <laughs> I feel the love of God. <laughs> Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Jesus. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Hallelujah. <laughs> he was there alone. He was there alone. Wow. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch, Rico, God wants to hold your hand. Hallelujah. God wants to hold your hand. I just see his hand coming out to you. And it's like he's, he says that you know all about me, but now I want you to hold my hand. He wants to walk with you. And he wants to go. It's almost like this is what he's saying now. He's saying to you that your, your journey in him has been fruitful, but now he wants to kind of. Come, come, stand, stand. He wants to take you like this. And he says, Now I'm going to do the leading in this relationship. That's what he's saying to you. I'm going to do the lead. Where, where you've come to a point now where you, only, where you can only go so far. And the Holy Ghost has to show you now this, show you take the, take the wheel in this relationship. He's got to take the wheel in this relationship. He goes, that I can't, you can't go any further now in yourself. You understand me, you know me. Now I'm going to have to show you what you do not know. And I, that scripture, was it Jeremiah? Was it 33? No, call, no, call no, unto I'll, me. Call unto me and I'll show you. I will show you great and mighty things. So I believe the Lord is saying to you, call unto him. He's going to show you. He's going to verify who's of God, who's not of God. He's going to show you what's of God, what's not of God. He's going to show you where you can go, where you can't go. Because this relationship he's saying is not by sight. It's not by sight. It's by faith. It's by faith, sorry, and not by sight. Hallelujah. And he's saying that in this new season of new development your relationship, he needs to lead you. He needs to be very careful of, 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 of understanding it through your eyes. Trust in the Lord. Trust, that's what I hear again. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. And lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Is it 5 and 6? Amen. Karabashika. Hallelujah. Praise God. Where was I? But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto him, them walking on the sea and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were troubled saying it is a spirit <laughs> tell someone this is a spirit <laughs> sorry that's funny and they cried out for fear wow but straight away jesus spake unto them saying be of good cheer it is i be not afraid and peter answered him and said lord if it be thou bid me to come into the water and he said this watch 29 come 
And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked onto the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Say someone, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Uh, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith. Wow. Wherefore did thou, didst thou doubt? And when were come unto the ship, the wind ceased. And they, then they which they were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Wow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So see, something happens here in the middle of this story. The Bible says that from verse 22, Jesus commanded the disciples to go a little further than him. He said to them, I'm now going to get rid of the multitude because the multitude have come after he's fed the 5,000 and he's saying to them, look, now you guys have to go a little further. So they get into the boat and they travel out a little further upon his word. Amen. But they're looking for Jesus because Jesus sent them to go without them. Amen. You see, sometimes God will ask you to do something and you don't know how you're going to get there. You don't even know what you're going to do. You don't even know how, you're gonna, how it's going to work. But he will tell you to go out and go a little further. Amen. He will give you one step, one direction. He'll say to you, listen, this is what you need to do. Just obey. Like Sister Lena said, just obey. Just go out and do the thing. Just go out and help the person. Go out and encourage the person. He might tell you when you're walking down the road that, you know, that person needs a hug. Just go out and hug them. They might think you're weird, you know, but, they might, but then you start realizing afterwards that why God gave you the step. Amen? You see, the prophetic is understanding that sometimes you don't have to know. Like Sister Lena says, I'm preaching. You're preaching myself. Sermon, isn't it? You know, you don't have to know the way. All you got to know is the word. Amen. You see, the disciples didn't even know where they were going, but just the fact Jesus told them to go. Praise God. Is someone with me? Hallelujah. And then they're looking for Jesus, and they're thinking, how is Jesus going to get onto the boat? And they see on the water Jesus walking upon the water, and they're thinking it must be some sort of ghost. It must be some sort of duppy. It must be some sort of <laughs> some sort of thing, you know? You know? Imagine that. Imagine you being on the boat. Jesus tells you to go a little further. And now you're seeing something coming towards you miraculously. Isn't that how it is? When sometimes when God asks us to walk in the miraculous, to take a leap of faith, to take a leap of a step in the, in the, in the unknown, suddenly we're starting to see things happening. And you're thinking, what? Can that really be happening to me? You know, you take a leap of faith by sending your CV off to a job that you're not even qualified for. Suddenly you're realizing the job is calling back, so you might have the wrong person. <laughs> That's what you're thinking, you might have the wrong person. It's not me, it's not me. But you see, when you start taking a leap of into the, into, into the supernatural, the supernatural starts to come and follow you, amen? When you start walking in the supernatural presence, the supernatural power of God, that's when you start seeing the supernatural happening. They did something that was kind of strange. They went away, went off when they wasn't, where they didn't know they were going. And then all of a sudden, that's when Jesus started to follow them walking on the water. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you this season, if you do what the unconventional, you're going to get the unconventional coming back looking out for you. Hallelujah. You're going to get the reward of your faith. Your faith in this season is what you need. God needs to remove. Move, move a mountain. He said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can tell the mountain, come from here to there. Hallelujah. When you have faith in your spirit, the Bible says faith is a substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. The disciples didn't see where they were going, but they had the substance. They had that Jesus. They had that confidence that God was the one directing their step. You see, when God is directing your steps, you can't fail. But when you direct your own step, you start taking yourself away away from the plan, the position God wants you to have. And God is saying to us, can we listen to his word? Hallelujah. The disciples did it and all of a sudden the supernatural happened. Jesus is walking upon the water. Come on now, this is something miraculous, isn't it? Imagine this, you have a garden pond and all of a sudden a man is coming, walking in your pond and you're, you're calling the police, isn't it? You're saying, nine, 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 look, there's somebody. You're calling me, you're calling the priest. You're saying, look, come and pray for my pond. There's a man walking on my pond. Hallelujah. Come on, you guys act like it's happening every day, amen? Yeah. Come on. You have to understand that it was something miraculous for a man to be walking on water. They saw him feed the 5,000. That was miraculous. Praise God. 
That almost got them a little bit thinking. They saw him heal, heal the lepers. That's okay. That's kind of powerful as well. They saw him. They saw him now. You know. You know. Now. 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 You know. Raising the dead. And they're thinking, Wow, this guy's pretty good. But now, when they see him now walking upon the water. Walking upon the elements. You see, the water is symbolic, can be symbolic or, sp or spiritual of the elements we have in life. Amen. Water is symbolic of, 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 of either, it can be of spiritual state. When the water is calm, we say your life is kind of calm. If you have a dream of water and the water is clear and pure, then we say, all right, then, you know, you're thinking that, you know, it's a good season coming. When the water is troubled and murky, and muddy, you're now beginning to see, gosh, wow, you know, things are probably not so good in my spiritual space, hey, amen? Yeah. But you see, Jesus now is walking upon the troubled water. And they're looking at themselves thinking, how is this possible? Praise God. You see, when Jesus comes into our lives, the impossible becomes possible. When God leads us, the, imp the, the impractical becomes practical. You see, he wasn't waiting, wasn't waiting for, what he's really waiting for wasn't really to, what he set them away for wasn't really to go anywhere, but to show him what he can do. Amen. When God tells you to take a step unto the unknown, he's not saying, listen, it's not for you to do it, but it's for me to show you I can do it. Hallelujah. So something happened now in the mind of the disciples when they saw all the miracles, but this one opened up their mind for them to see that our God is true truly God. Our God is truly great. Our God is truly supernatural. Our God is above the power. He was literally walking on the natural elements to show you this is the God that you serve. Come on, I'm preaching better than your amen. You see, God is looking at us. He's saying to us, go out of where you don't know. Do what you can't think you can't do. Watch me work in this season. Watch me come out, shine out, show up and go out. Hallelujah. Watch me do what you cannot do. Watch me build the bridge where there's no bridge. Watch you make a way when there seem to be no way. This is the God we serve. And he said, Jesus is walking along, strutting along, saying, can't you believe that a son of man can even do this? Can't you believe? What's wrong with your faith mechanism? Hallelujah. When I tell you to do something, I will provide the provision. Hallelujah. Amen. When I tell you to go somewhere, I will make the way. Hallelujah. When I, when, I, when I bring something into your hand, I will be the one that will shape your hand to make your hand mold, to make, your, to make the hand fit the thing work. Hallelujah. What I'm trying to tell you, um, everybody here, is that God is saying to us, if we can do it, he will take us through it. Hallelujah. Amen. If we can, if we can, if we can obey, then we can see the, the hand of God move. Hallelujah. It took faith to be able to do, follow the word of Christ and then see and release the, what, what God had done, hallelujah. To receive what God had done. So now Jesus is now walking. Let me slow it down because you guys are looking confused. It's like you've never heard anybody preach before, but it's all right. We're going to keep going. It says, look at it, it says, verse 28. When the disciples saw him walking the wall, they were troubled, saying it was a spirit, and they cried out for fear. <laughs> First thing we do is that sometimes when we see God, <laughs> when we see God, when we see God telling us to do something we, 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 that we don't like, we start feeling uncomfortable. No, God, not me. No, me, no, me. No, me. Go talk to them about Jesus. No, 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 me, no, me. <laughs> Leave it to the evangelist. <laughs> Amen. You forget about all your prejudices, all your things. You just suddenly realize, no, no, no. The first thing that happened to them, they had fear. They're saying, listen, oh, you know, this, how can, how can anything different than what we know happen in our life? This is what sometimes stops the supernatural happening in ministries, in the lives of people. We have an opinion of how things can be. And we don't open our eyes to what God says they can be. You have an opinion of your life. You have an opinion of your sickness. You see, you've got an opinion of your position in life. But God is saying, can you open your mind to a greater opinion? You see, when God's glory falls on a person, it's his doctor. It means his opinion. And when his glory comes upon you, this means that his opinion of you, where you're going, who you are, is bigger than the opinion of yourself. Hallelujah. When people see God's glory over a person, they're seeing God's glorified opinion. Wait, I thought he was just a road man. Wait, I thought he was just a wimp. I thought he was a nobody. The glory comes upon you to show you I am more. He is more. He is greater. He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. When the glory of God comes on a person, the destination and the destiny of a person begins to change. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
they began to realize that, listen, this God we serve is glorious. Our opinion of the natural was wrong. Our opinion of life was wrong. Our confidence in what we knew was wrong. Our confidence in who God is is wrong. They began to see that something needs to change in your mindset. The Bible says that man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You can't go any further than you think, amen? If you think that you're always small, you're going to be small forever. But if you see yourself big, if you see yourself great in God, if you see yourself doing exploits in God, if you see yourself moving mountains of God, that's when faith starts to release in your spirit. That's what he was trying to say to them. Don't think the water is a limitation. Don't think the water is a problem. People like me and you, we walk on water. We walk on mountains. We command mountains to go from the left hand to the right hand. He's trying to say, this is who you are as a Christian. Hallelujah. Tell someone, get ready for the supernatural. And the Bible says, straight away Jesus spoke unto them, saying, be of good cheer. Be not afraid, it is I. <laughs> be not afraid, amen. Don't be afraid if things are going to change when I come into your life. Amen. That's what Jesus was saying to them. Don't be afraid if barriers break when I come into your life. Don't be afraid if I push you a little further and you start seeing the hand of God in your life. Don't be afraid if the natural perception of life changes because God has come. Don't be afraid if the friends leave away because I've come because it is I. Don't be afraid if you now see miracle checks coming from the post. Don't worry. It is I. Don't be afraid if money is following you. It is I. Don't be afraid if blessings are coming your way. It is I. You've taken a step into the supernatural. Expect I to come after you. Hallelujah. Come on, I wish someone to catch it right now. Hallelujah. See, that's why he said for them to go a little further. That's why he said you've got to run a little further. That's why he said you've got to do something unconventional because that's who I follow. I follow the unconventional Christian. Come on, hallelujah. I follow the person that does not go by the rules. I follow the person that believes me no matter what the circumstance says. I follow the person that knows me as God, not just knows me as king, not just knows me as, as another prophet, not just someone who knows me as another leader. I follow that person because that person will sow seeds when they don't be, when they don't even have money to sow seeds. That person will move mountains when they don't even see that the mountain can be moved. That person will do exploits. He says, disciples, learn them this. I am a supernatural God. And I like to sue things supernaturally. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. He waited that Lazarus was dead four days before he turned up. Come on, imagine that. That convinced me God was a black man. Hallelujah. Four days later. Can you imagine him? It's so what happened here. And he's walking, walking up. He's walking in. And they're like, Jesus, Jesus. He's dead, he's dead. What, really? <laughs> Look like he was sleeping. <laughs> Walking in, and then he comes in, and they're cussing him, they're like, what? if this man had come on time, you see time? <laughs> if this man had been on time, amen? And they're like, you know, you know, you know, but Jesus looks at him and goes, get, get out of the room. <laughs> it's a, don't be afraid, it is hard. <laughs> And he looks at Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth! Just like that. And he that was dead began to speak. I love that scripture. Hallelujah. You see, he's not allowing himself to be limited by natural conditions. That's what he was trying to teach. Don't let yourself be limited by natural circumstances. Don't let the people be limited. Don't You see, you only know how it goes because someone told you how it goes. Hallelujah. But someone now greater than the person you believed in is telling you how it can go. Hallelujah. He's telling you how the spirit can move. He's telling you what can happen at your life. You see, Tony preached it on a Friday. He said, miracle signs and wonders follow the life of the believer. Hallelujah. Come on, don't limit your God. Hallelujah. You may be limited, but your God is limitless. Hallelujah. You may be chained, but your God is a chain breaker. You may be down, but your God is a raiser. You may be someone who is poor, but your God is rich. Hallelujah. Come on, you need to tap in. Tell someone, tap in, tap in, tap in. And Peter answered him saying, Lord, if it be thou, you bid me to come on the water. Hallelujah. You can see why Peter was the blessed one. Because the other disciples were sitting there on fear. It's a gross. It's a topic. How can it be happening? Hallelujah. You see, when they had the prophecies of the Messiah coming, they didn't realize the Messiah would be God himself. And God is not limited by his creation. Come on now. 
He's not limited by creation. He created creation. Hallelujah. Yeah. If he wants to give you a six finger, he would do it just like that. Amen. Yeah. He wants to straighten your ear or give you a third ear. He can grow, he can grow out. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what has happened in your body. God can heal your body. It doesn't matter what has happened in your mind. God can change your mind. It doesn't matter what has happened in your family. God can change and heal your family. It doesn't matter what they've been saying. Sometimes I look at the devils in my family. I watch and say, aha, uh -huh, you see my God. Don't be afraid. He's coming. I say, look at what's happening in my house. I say, aha, uh -huh, don't be afraid. My God is coming. Because that, what they say is temporary. But my God is eternal. Hallelujah. That's why it says, those who know their God, they shall do exploits. We're not limited by what we see. Come on, turn to somebody say, don't be limited by what you see. Come on, come on, tell them something's going to change. Something's going to change. And Peter answered, hallelujah. Peter answered and said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come on the water. Hallelujah. He said, Peter was now realizing, listen, this God is not no joke, hallelujah. He, look, at, look at him, he's walking on the water. He says, if it's you, bid me to come upon the water. And Peter, and what does he say to him? Look what he says, verse 29. He says, he said, come. You see, Jesus is a bad man. <laughs> come. Not even like Peter, it's okay, just come. <laughs> so he says to him, come. And Peter was come down out of the ship. And he walked on the water to go to Jesus. You see, something was released in Peter when he saw the supernatural come into the life of the disciples. Something was released when you see a man who can conquer death. Something was released when you see a man who can cause blind eyes to open. Something is released when you read about the words of Jesus. See, faith was coming into Peter's life. He realized, listen, I, if this man is with me, if this man is holding me, if this man is behind me, if God is for me, who can be against me? He realized my enemies are in trouble. The people who doubt me are in trouble. The people that try to, try to me down are in trouble because if this God is by my side I can begin to walk on the water I can begin to walk on the trouble I can begin to walk on the problem you see the problem's been walking on me but that but that, that was last season this is I'm gonna start walking on the trouble this is I'm gonna be the one changing the dynamics this is what I'm gonna be the one calling the shots I'm gonna be the one saying how it goes he began to realize there's authority in the life of the believer I don't have to go with the status quo you read sky news to tell see what happens I'm the one directing Sky News, hallelujah. You begin to realize that who you are in Christ, you are more than a conqueror, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Peter says, listen, my master has conquered water. I can conquer water. And he begins now, look what happens in verse 30. He's, he, the Bible says, he, he began to go down to 29. He began to walk on the water and go to Jesus. His eyes fixed on Jesus. He started seeing the supernatural happen in his life. When you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, that's when he can start to work and operate. When you keep your eyes fixed on God, that's when you can start seeing the things that people read about in the Bible. When you keep your eyes fixed on God, you see the enemy, look what happens, verse 30. The enemy got mad and then he started to distract Peter. And when Peter saw the wind, look at that. Are you with me? What did he see? He saw the wind and he saw it what? Boisterous. Tell someone boisterous. Look what happened. The fear came into him. When he saw the nature of his problem, all of a sudden then, that's when the fear came out of him. The energy was sapped from him. Some of you see your bank balance and you begin to do like this. Fighting. You say, I know I sold my seed. I know I sold my seed, God. But the bank account, God. <laughs> Minus, God. And then you see the bailiff letter, and you're like, oh. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> He saw the wind, he saw the sea, and he began to sink. You see, the, the problem wasn't what Jesus had called him, or Jesus told him to do. The problem is where his eyes was at. That's what the problem was. The problem was what he was looking at. What do you choose to look at? Who do you choose to believe? 
Whose report do you believe? Who do you believe is God? Do you believe God is God or do you believe Satan is God? Because you're going to have to serve one because you can't serve two masters. The moment you take your eyes off his way and his and your, your faith moves, you start beginning to turn your attention. Anything you turn your attention becomes your object of desire, your object of worship. Whatever you give your most attention to, if it is the thing that you desire most in your heart. Wow. Peter began now to turn his attention, saw the wind. He was afraid. And look at he says, he goes, Lord, save me. Save me. Verse 31, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, look at this now. The moment now Peter cries out, God says, I've got you, Peter. Amen? But he doesn't actually say that. He grabs out. That's what it means. If you're falling down and I'm grabbing your hand, it's like, you know, imagine that. You, 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 think, you think he would be proud. Peter, well done. All the rest of them are chickens. They're, they're you know, nothing. I don't know. They're not my disciples. Imagine he's been embarrassed, but I don't know. They don't belong to me. <laughs> you know, you're the only one, Peter, who decided to follow after me, to walk by faith. Instead, he doesn't even give him a well done. No pat on the back. He says to him, oh thou little faith, why did you doubt? Come on, come on now. You can see the mentality of Jesus now. He's saying, what, why did you think? Why did you, why did you think the wind was better than you? Why did you think the water could make you sink? Can, can you hear what he's saying? He's saying the things that you were taught your whole life, you were taught water will make you drown, isn't it? You were taught that, you were taught the wind could blow you away. He said, why did you believe that the water, the ocean, you could sink in it? Come on, someone's not catching it, hallelujah. Yeah, You've got to catch it, what the Lord is saying. He goes, why did you think that the bailiff could take your money? Why did you think that the enemy could take your blessing? Why did you think? Not well done for you came a little way, but why did you allow that into that thought to come into your mind? That thought is an insult to me, who I am as God. He looked at Peter, he says, why do you think, why can you Bible-believing, tongue-speaking Christian think that I could ever fail you? Why do you think that my hand is not able to save? Why do you think that, listen, you made in my image, you can't go forth and shine like I shine? Why did you think that, listen, no matter what the enemy says, why did you think I'd ever let him take territory in your life? Why did you entertain that thought? He said, I've expanded, I was doing the walking on the water to expand your mind. Why did you let your mind go back into the small place? Come on now, come on now. Come on now. You see, I'm telling you something. I'm violent when it comes to my vision. If you can't share my vision, you get out the room. Hallelujah. If you can't share my faith, you get out the room. Hallelujah. I was telling a story, you know, I tell this story, you know, um, I think when Lena, Lena and, and the family first met me, and I, and I said to them about, I'm believing God for all the money for my wedding. Hallelujah. And every time people come to me and say, Mama, Mo, the people, because they knew how I was like. Mo, is, do, do we have any the m -m -m money in the account? I said, we have no money in the account. But we're going to get married. I didn't care what the wind was saying, what the water was saying. I knew the word has been given to me in my spirit. My Lord shall supply all according to his riches in glory. I don't need to listen to the wind. I don't need to listen to what the fashion world. The fashion says take a loan, go and work a job. And listen, I have a God who's greater. Come on, hallelujah. Amen. Don't pay my tithes for nothing, hallelujah. He's working it out for me, hallelujah. Amen. See, that's what he looked at Peter saying. And I remember like, we had, what's it called? We had about two weeks left. We had sent the invitation out. We took a step out in faith. We sent the invitations out. We told everybody the wedding's coming. People was coming to me, oh, has everything been done? I was like, yes, it's been done in Jesus' name. <laughs> I was a violent person, amen? <laughs> Just didn't, like, didn't have no, didn't, couldn't, couldn't say it in a nice way. Because I'm protecting my faith, amen? Because the wind is blowing, I'm like, God. And sometimes in private you rock. You're like, God, am I really hearing from you? You No, know, I'm hearing from you, I'm all right. <laughs> and the weeks were going down. We had months, then we into weeks. When I start seeing the two month mark come, I had zero, I, had, I was even overdrawn. I said, God. <laughs> See, this is the truth coming out, Lena. <laughs> when I start saying, I said, listen, I've got to up the ante now. 
I gotta start. Listen, we drove all the way to Ashburn. We're not leaving until we see a miracle. You see, this is what Jesus was trying to produce in the disciple. Get violent with your pursuit of your blessing. I said to myself, I'm driving now to Ashburn. Hallelujah, with the little 20 pound I had left, amen. And I'm believing God to take us back. <laughs> I didn't even tell Cab that, amen. You know, I'm, I'm believing God to take us back because he has to provide. He's my God. If he's not my God, then I'm going to serve Buddha, amen. Right. Maybe he provides. Or Allah, he provides. Come on, he has to show me he's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. I jump up, I shout, I've got to have a reason, amen. You see, some of us, we don't, we can't jump up anymore because we're afraid to walk on the water. We, we, we've sank a little bit like Peter, so we're like, no, 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 I've tried that. Time to use wisdom. <laughs> and you say it's wisdom, do you know? But listen, I was still at the stage where I was crazy, amen? I'm still crazy now, amen? Praise God, don't watch me, amen? I'm crazy, amen? So, it, and I remember two months came, we now go into Ashburnham, and we are, pray, we, are, we, we are praying. Listen, I come back. I see more debts come through the post. I said, aha, where's the next trip to Ashburn? We're going again. And we're praying. And I'm going, I'm with, then me and Cap decided to up the ante. We decided like we're going to pray at midnight together. So I would drive all the way from, to, from my house to hers just to pray together yeah. at midnight. So we prayed at midnight and the Lord gave us a vision. He said, gave us a vision of a bucket. Supernatural. A bucket. What does a bucket mean? And then you have to, and I had the interpretation of it. The Lord said to me, Open a joint account. We ain't married, nothing's happening, there's no money happening. He says, open a joint account together. She could run and steal my money, I don't even know what's going on, amen? <laughs> but open a joint account, amen? See, with faith comes risk, amen? But with risk comes reward, amen? amen. Come on, I'm a finance man, I studied it. High risk means high reward. Low risk, low reward. High risk, and put a lens, I know how to not to manipulate the hand of God, but I know how to get God's hand to it. Tell God, tell people it's gonna happen. Yeah. You'll see God, what God is a hmm. He's a proud man, he's a hmm, no. I have to do it now. <laughs> Imagine them as a proud black man, I have to do it now. My name is on the line, I will do it now. <laughs> so I put God, I said God, my God was, the moment I said my God was, heaven is busy finding somebody to blow, somebody's heart is ready. Looking around the, 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 the index of heaven, who's connected to Mo? Let's see, pour out money into their life. The, the, heaven is working. The moment I say God is on the throne, heaven is working. But the enemy says, I need to get him to look at the wind. I need to get him to look at the sea. So the enemy came in more and more and more. I had bailiffs coming. I had people looking for me. One time I was even driving my car in that season and I was going to Asda. And I went to Asda by a sandwich because I was feeling a little bit like that in that season. I come out of the, I come out of the, the car, the, the Asda. They've, already, they've locked my wheel. My wheel was locked. And they were gonna, they was gonna clamp my car and they said, and the, my, my, our church then was in East London. It was the only thing I used to get the, the, the car. I, just, I didn't care where I was in Asda, straight away. Come on, when the enemy attacks you in Asda, you're gonna attack him back in Asda, amen? I started praying. They said, if you don't have 24 hours, we're gonna take your car. I said, I only need a minute. Come on, while you read it, I do it. Hallelujah. Then I'm telling you something. When you believe in God, you will see the hand of God move. Within one minute, the Lord says, call this auntie that hates you. I said, thank you, God. I called the auntie that hates me. I said, auntie, this was happening. She goes, no way, the money's in your account. Praise God. Couldn't stand me, but had to bless me. Hallelujah. Come on. That's what prayers do. Couldn't stand me, but had to bless me. No choice. No choice. So I said to God, like, you see, you want to learn how to interpret things spiritually. I'm going somewhere now. When I start seeing the water get boisterous, that's when I saw the wind getting bo I remember the scripture. I must be going the right way to Jesus. Come on, Kabasha. Peter was on the right road to Jesus. When he started seeing the trouble come in his life, when he started seeing the enemies double in his life, when he started seeing the issues multiply, he knew that he was on the right way because that's the wind getting boisterous. Hallelujah. 
I said to myself, I've got to keep on praying. I was already praying for one hour. I switched it to two. Come on. Hallelujah. When your life is in line, what do you do? You fight, isn't it? Hallelujah. Two hours wasn't working me. Switched it to four. Come on. Come on. I can do that for any. I can watch TV for four hours. I can pray for four hours. Hallelujah. Amen. When you're serious about the blessing, you will do serious things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then immediately, look at verse 31. Immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. Hallelujah. Immediately God caught me and said to me, come on, son of man. Come on, my son. Go back to Ashburn again. We had literally one week to go. I went to go see a man of God. My, one of my last tactics. I said, man of God, you would understand me. God has told me to live by faith. I was doing okay. <laughs> I, just, I was walking, I was working in corporate banking. God told me to do this, God. You know, I didn't want to do it. He told me to go out and walk on the water. And I'm, I said, I said, I didn't even ask him for the whole amount. Right now we needed about 3,000 because we did the bucket thing and people started bringing money to our doors and everything. It was powerful. God, right, we came to a point we needed 3,000 pounds. I said, God, went to the man of God, one I respected. And he looked at me right in the face and he said to me, you have not heard from God. And I said to him, what? <laughs> and he goes to me, you need to consider, you need to count the cost. You need to be proper responsible as a man of God. You need to be, you need to be, you need to understand how things are, you, you can't expect to marry somebody and you ain't got no money. And I just started dis discerning the voice. I said, Satan, you've even got into the priest. Hallelujah. Yes. I don't hate the priest. Yes. I hate the devil. Yes. So the devil tried to get me in Asda. I'm not surprised by him. Hallelujah. <laughs> he tried to get me at home. Hallelujah. Now he tried to get me at the house of God. Sometimes you're believing God. You can't even talk to Christians about the things you're believing in. Hallelujah. You've got to keep it to yourself. You've got to keep it to yourself. Because if you don't keep it to yourself, you're going to lose it. Hallelujah. And then the man of God said what he said, and I was crushed. I was on the floor. Hallelujah. Uh, but I heard the voice, the hand stretch forth out, and it said to me, fast and pray for three days. At most point, you would let yourself sink, like Peter said. You know, you let yourself sink. But I heard the Lord say, fast and pray for three days. Three days, I fasted and prayed. At the end of the three-day fasting, I got a word, and I said, can I ask this person? And that one person gave us the entire amount. Amen. Amen. That's good. With two days to spare. Amen. And we had the grandest wedding. Amen. I didn't even dance because I was so exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was being stush, but I wasn't. Amen. Because I would learned how to walk on water. Amen. Praise God. Some people read the Bible. Some people do the Bible. Yeah. Praise God. Follow people who do the Bible, not the ones who read the Bible. Yeah. Because when you're trying to do the Bible, they can only tell you what they've read. Yes. Praise God. But people who do the Bible will tell you what they do when they're in a storm. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And the Bible says that, look at this, 32. And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. And then they, the ship came and they worshipped him, saying, of a truth, you are the son of God. You see, when you begin to trust Jesus in a new dimension, you can say as a truth, he's the son of God. When you see him work in your family, when your family's been down and out, and you see the hand of God move, you can say, as a truth, you are the son of God. When, you can, when your auntie can saw the banquet, and saw the banquet so beautiful, she said, of a truth, he's the son of God. When you can see that, that he came in the storm, and nobody in the natural can help you in the storm, you can say, of a truth, he's the son of God. When you see how he delivered your grandmama, how he delivered your granddaddy, how he delivered your mama, your papa, your auntie, when you see cancer disappear, of a truth, he's a son of God. When you see the hand of God move so powerfully in your life, of a truth, he's a son of God. Hallelujah. You don't have to go Sunday morning to go to church to get faith. You've seen you be, he's took you through. He's held your hand as you walked on water. When you look back at your life and you say, that was Jesus, that was Jesus, that was Jesus, that was Jesus, that was Jesus. That was Jesus. That was Jesus. That was Jesus. When they ask you why you're crazy with it, you say, that was Jesus. When they ask you why you jump and shout, that was Jesus. I should have been dead, but that was Jesus. I should have been destroyed, but that was Jesus. I should have been embarrassed, but that was Jesus. You see, I should have been broke, busted, and disgusted, but what? That was Jesus. I should have seen myself fall down a long time ago, but that was Jesus. They said, don't give up your job and do full-time ministry in London. Are you crazy? In Nigeria, that might work. Hallelujah. They said, that's what they said to me. But I heard a word saying, come out on the water. Come on. 
I had a word that said, step out into the deep. Hallelujah. I had a word that said, listen, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I wasn't looking at the wind. I was looking at the word. God, what are you saying? God, what are you doing? God, who are you and who am I? Hallelujah. If, you are be, if you're the father, I must be the son. If you are the king, I must be the king's son. If you're blessed, I must be blessed. If you're famous, I must be favored. Come on, some of us, God is trying to expand your mind. He's like, open your eyes. Look and see who you are. You're the king. You're the you're sorry. You're the child of a king. You're a champion. You're a chosen one. You're a chosen vessel. If God be for you, come on. Who? Come on, stand up on your feet. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Begin to bless him right now. Thank him for your life. Hallelujah. Because it was Jesus. Come on, open your mouth. Don't be shy Thank with you. it today. Don't be shy with it today. We had all those testimonies. We had all those words of encouragement. Come on, bless him. Hallelujah. He's delivered you from the pit. He delivered Joseph from the pit. He delivered Moses from Pharaoh. Children from Pharaoh. He's the deliverer. He's a way maker. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. Come on, bless him right now with everything you have. Hallelujah. Even if he called you to walk on the water, you will see the end of the day. Hallelujah. You will see the goodness of God. Hallelujah. What he promised you in your life you will see what he said to you you will get you will get what he promised you you have in your house you will have hallelujah come on if you have faith believe it right now come on believe it right now bless him right now thank you father come on come on you gotta do better than that come on come on come on you gotta pray like you won the lottery amen because you won it already if you could shout like you won it you will get it hallelujah come on come on come on no church of in the praise hallelujah come on give him the glory give him the glory give him the glory Give him the glory. Come on, if you're shy about him, be shy about your blessing. Come on, give him the glory. Give him the honor. Give him the honor. Come on, come on. Peter said, I knew this was not a game. The moment you cause the problem to come, you're going to learn how to walk on water today. Come on. Come on, keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't look at left to the right. Don't care what people say about you. Don't care what people watching you in this moment. Come on, give your eye to Jesus. Give your heart to Jesus. Come on, give it to him right now. Come on, there's a release of this kind of message. God wants to see your mouth open. God wants to see your praise come out. God wants to see your cheer come out. He wants to see you believe. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Sword of the Spirit, we're believing in for a new building. It's time to believe and walk on water. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, praise him right now. Come on, release him right now. Come on, release him right now. Come on, as you pray, the devil gets smaller and smaller and smaller. The louder you shout, the smaller he gets. The louder you shout, the smaller he looks. The louder you shout, the smaller he can come into your life. Come on, come on, come on. Push him out. The Bible says he inhabits the praise of his people. Come on, begin to praise. Come on, begin to worship. Come on, begin to shout. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Come on, shout, 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 shout. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. We're not performing right now. Come on, come on. This is personal. Hallelujah. Give him a personal praise from your belly. Come on, come on. The amount of time the enemy they try to take you out. That was Jesus. Come on, the amount of time the enemy tried to destroy you. But Jesus. The amount of time the enemy tried to bring you low. But Jesus, come on. There's a promise on your life. It will not go away. Because he said, I will never leave you. Nor forsake you. Come on, come on. Shemaine, you're going to Jamaica. Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Come on, access it by faith. He looked at Peter. He goes, what's wrong with your faith, Peter? What's wrong with your faith? Come on, release it. Come on, speak it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, take your eyes off the wind. Take your eyes off the rain. Put your eyes on your king. He says, he gave me a word. He says, shout. Isaiah 59 verse 1. says, cry aloud and speak. Come on, come on. Cry aloud and speak. Don't spear the adoration. Don't spear the praises. Don't spear the glory. Come on, lift his name high. If I be lifted up, then I shall draw all men close to me. Come on, if you want it, take it. If you want it, take it. If 
you want to take it, shaka baba baba kushaka, shaka baba baba kushaka.